Hello everyone, this is Ifeinwa. Welcome to Finding Africa, to explore and share the beauty of Africa, starting with folk stories from Southern Nigeria. The cock who caused a fight between two towns. Ekbo and Etim were half-brothers. That is to say, they had the same mother, but different fathers. Their mother, first of all, had married a chief of Duke Town when Ekbo was born. But after a time, she got tired of him and went to Old Town, where she married Ejukwa and gave birth to Etim. Both of the boys grew up and became very rich. Ekbo had a cock, of which he was very fond, and every day when Ekbo sat down to meals, the cock used to fly onto the table and feed also. Amaukwa, a native of Old Town, who was rather poor, was jealous of the two brothers and made up his mind, if possible, to bring about a quarrel between them, although he pretended to be friends with both. One day, Ekbo, the elder brother, gave a big dinner to which Etim and many other people were invited. Amma Okwa was also present. A very good dinner was laid for the guests and plenty of palm wine was provided. When they had commenced to feed, the pet cock flew onto the table and began to feed off Etim's plate. Etim then told one of his servants to seize the cock and tie him up in the house until after the feast. So the servant carried the cock to Etim's house and tied him up for safety. After much eating and drinking, Etim returned home late at night with his friend Amaokwa, and just before they went to bed, Amaokwa saw Ekpo's cock tied up. So early in the morning, he went to Ekpo's house, who received him gladly. About eight o'clock, when it was time for Ekbo to have his early morning meal, he noticed that his pet cock was missing. When he remarked upon its absence, Amma Okwa told him that his brother had seized the cock the previous evening during the dinner and was going to kill it, just to see what Ekbo would do. When Ekbo heard this, he was very vexed and sent Amma Okwa back to his brother to ask him to return the cock immediately. Instead of delivering the message as he had been instructed, Amma Okwa told Etim that his elder brother was so angry with him for taking away his friend, the cock, that he would fight him and had sent Amma Okwa on purpose to declare war between the two towns. Etim then told Amma Okwa to return to Ekpo and say he would be prepared for anything his brother could do. Amma Okwa then advised Ekpo to call all his people in from their farms as Etim would attack him, and on his return, he advised Etim to do the same. He then arranged a day for the fight to take place between the two brothers and their people. Etim then marched his men to the other side of the creek and waited for his brother. So Amma Okwa went to Ekpo and told him that Etim had got all his people together and was waiting to fight. Ekpo then led his men against his brother and there was a big battle, many men being killed on both sides. The fighting went on all day until at last, towards evening, the other chiefs of Kalaba met and determined to stop it. So they called the Egbo men together and sent them out with their drums, and eventually the fight stopped. Three days later, a big palaver was held, when each of the brothers was told to state his case. When they had done so, it was found that Ama Okwa had caused the quarrel and the chiefs ordered that he should be killed. His father, who was a rich man, offered to give the Egbos 5,000 rods, five cows, 
and seven slaves to redeem his son, but they decided to refuse his offer. The next day, after being severely flogged, he was left for 24 hours tied up to a tree, and the following day his head was cut off. Ekpo was then ordered to kill his pet cock, so that it should not cause any further trouble between himself and his brother. And the law was passed that for the future, no one should keep a pet cock or any other tame animal. Moral. If you have a problem with someone, talk to them directly to make sure you really have a problem. The Affair of the Hippopotamus and the Tortoise or Why the Hippopotamus Lives in the Water Many years ago, the hippopotamus, whose name was Isantim, was one of the biggest kings on the land. He was second only to the elephant. The hippo had seven large fat wives, of whom he was very fond. Now and then, he used to give a big feast to the people. But a curious thing was that, although everyone knew the hippo, no one, except his seven wives, knew his name. At one of the feasts, just as the people were about to sit down, the hippo said, You have come to feed at my table, but none of you know my name. If you cannot tell my name, you shall all of you go away without your dinner. As they could not guess his name, they had to go away and leave all the good food and tumbo behind them. But before they left, the tortoise stood up and asked the hippopotamus what he would do if he told him his name at the next feast. So the hippo replied that he would be so ashamed of himself that he and his whole family would leave the land and for the future would dwell in the water. Now it was the custom for the hippo and his seven wives to go down every morning and evening to the river to wash and have a drink. Of this custom, the tortoise was aware. The hippo used to walk first, and the seven wives followed. One day, when they had gone down to the river to bathe, the tortoise made a small hole in the middle of the path, and then waited. When the hippo and his wives returned, two of the wives were some distance behind, so the tortoise came out from where he had been hiding, and half buried himself in the hole he had dug, leaving the greater part of his shell exposed. When the two hippo wives came along, the first one knocked her foot against the tortoise's shell and immediately called out to her husband. Oh, Isante, my husband, I have hurt my foot. At this, the tortoise was very glad and went joyfully home as he had found out the hippo's name. When the next feast was given by the hippo, he made the same condition about his name. So the tortoise got up and said, You promise you will not kill me if I tell you your name? And the hippo promised. The tortoise then shouted as loud as he was able, Your name is Isantim! At which a chair went up from all the people and then they sat down to their dinner. When the feast was over, the hippo with his seven wives, in accordance with his promise, went down to the river, and they have always lived in the water from that day till now. And although they come on shore to feed at night, you never find a hippo on land in the daytime. Moral. Don't charge your friends for dinner at your house. Why dead people are buried. In the beginning of the world, when the Creator had made men and women and the animals, they all lived together in the creation land. The Creator was a big chief past all men, and being very kind-hearted, was very sorry whenever anyone died. So one day he sent for the dog, who was his head messenger, and told him to go out into the world and give his word 
to all people that for the future, whenever anyone died, the body was to be placed in the compound and wood ashes were to be thrown over it. That the dead body was to be left on the ground and in 24 hours, it would become alive again. When the dog had traveled for half a day, he began to get tired. So as he was near an old woman's house, he looked in and seeing a bone with some meat on it, he made a meal of it and then went to sleep entirely forgetting the message which had been given him to deliver. After a time, when the dog did not return, the creator called for a sheep and sent him out with the same message. But the sheep was a very foolish one and being hungry, began eating the sweet grasses by the wayside. After a time, however, he remembered that he had a message to deliver, but forgot what it was exactly. So as he went about among the people, he told them that the message the Creator had given him to tell the people was that whenever anyone died, they should be buried underneath the ground. A little time afterwards, the dog remembered his message. So he ran into the town and told the people that they were to place wood ashes on the dead bodies and leave them in the compound and that they would come to life again after 24 hours. But the people would not believe him and said, We have already received the word from the Creator by the sheep that all dead bodies should be buried. In consequence of this, the dead bodies are now always buried and the dog is much disliked and not trusted as a messenger, as if he had not found the bone in the old woman's house and forgotten his message, the dead people might still be alive. Moral Always choose a reliable messenger to deliver your message. Of the fat woman who melted away there was once a very fat woman who was made of oil. She was very beautiful and many young men applied to the parents for permission to marry their daughter and offered dowry. But the mother always refused as she said it was impossible for her daughter to walk on a farm as she would melt in the sun. At last, a stranger came from a far distant country and fell in love with the fat woman and he promised if her mother would hand her to him that he would keep her in the shade. At last, the mother agreed and he took his wife away. When he arrived at his house, his other wife immediately became very jealous because when there was work to be done, firewood to be collected or water to be carried, the fat woman stayed at home and never helped as she was frightened of the heat. One day, when the husband was absent, the jealous wife abused the fat woman so much that she finally agreed to go and walk on the farm. Although her little sister, whom she had brought from home with her, implored her not to go, reminding her that their mother had always told them ever since they were born that she would melt away if she went into the sun. All the way to the farm, the fat woman managed to keep in the shade. And when they arrived at the farm, the sun was very hot. So the fat woman remained in the shade of a big tree. When the jealous wife saw this, she again began abusing her and asked her why she did not do her share of the work. At last, she could stand the nagging no longer. And although her little sister tried very hard to prevent her, the fat woman went out into the sun to work and immediately began to melt away. There was very soon nothing left of her but one big toe, which had been covered by a leaf. This her little sister observed, and with tears in her eyes, she picked up the toe, which was all that remained of the fat woman, and having covered it carefully with leaves, placed it in the bottom of her basket. When she arrived at the house, the little sister placed the toe in an earthen pot, filled it with water, and covered the top up with clay. 
When the husband returned, he said, Where is my fat wife? And the little sister, crying bitterly, told him that the jealous woman had made her go out into the sun and that she had melted away. She then showed him the pot with the remains of her sister and told him that her sister would come to life again in three months' time, quite complete. But he must send away the jealous wife so that there should be no more trouble. If he refused to do this, the little girl said she would take the pot back to their mother and when her sister became complete again, they would remain at home. The husband then took the jealous wife back to her parents who sold her as a slave and paid the dowry back to the husband so that he could get another wife. When he received the money, the husband took it home and kept it until the three months had elapsed. When the little sister opened the pot and the fat woman emerged, quite as fat and beautiful as she had been before, the husband was so delighted that he gave a feast to all his friends and neighbors and told them the whole story of the bad behavior of his jealous wife. Ever since that time, whenever a wife behaves very badly, the husband returns her to the parents who sell the woman as a slave and out of the proceeds of the sale, reimburse the husband the amount of dowry which he paid when he married the girl. Moral. Don't let peer pressure make you lose yourself. Concerning the leopard, the squirrel, and the tortoise. Many years ago, there was a great famine throughout the land, and all the people were starving. The yam crop had failed entirely. The plantains did not bear any fruit. The ground nuts were all shriveled up, and the corn never came to a head. Even the palm oil nuts did not ripen, and the peppers and okras also gave out. The leopard, however, who lived entirely on beef, did not care for any of these things. And although some of the animals who lived on corn and the growing crops began to get rather skinny, he did not mind very much. In order to save himself trouble, as everybody was complaining of the famine, he called a meeting of all the animals and told them that, as they all knew, he was very powerful and must have food, that the famine did not affect him, as he only lived on flesh. And as there were plenty of animals about, he did not intend to starve. He then told all the animals present at the meeting that if they did not wish to be killed themselves, they must bring their grandmothers to him for food. And when they were finished, he would feed off their mothers. The animals might bring their grandmothers in succession, and he would take them in their turn, so that, as there were many different animals, it would probably be some time before their mothers were eaten, by which time it was possible that the famine would be over. But in any case, he warned them that he was determined to have sufficient food for himself and that if the grandmothers or mothers were not forthcoming, he would turn upon the young people themselves and kill and eat them. This, of course, the young generation who had attended the meeting did not appreciate and in order to save their own skins, agreed to supply the leopard with his daily meal. The first to appear with his aged grandmother was the squirrel. The grandmother was a poor, decrepit old thing with a mangy tail and the leopard swallowed her at one gulp and then looked round for more. In an angry voice, he growled out, This is not the proper food for me. I must have more at once. Then a bush cat pushed his old grandmother in front of the leopard, but he snarled at her and said, Take that nasty old thing away from me. I want some sweet food. It was then the turn of the bush buck, and after a great deal of hesitation, a wretchedly poor and thin old doe tottered and fell in front of the leopard, who immediately dispatched her, and although the meal was very unsatisfactory, declared that his appetite was appeased for that day. The next day, 
a few more animals brought their old grandmothers until at last it became the tortoise's turn. But being very cunning, he produced witnesses to prove that his grandmother was dead. So the leopard excused him. After a few days, all of the animal's grandmothers were exhausted and it became the turn of the mothers to supply food for the ravenous leopard. Now, although most of the young animals did not mind getting rid of their grandmothers, whom they had scarcely even known, many of them had very strong objections to providing their mothers, of whom they were very fond, as food for the leopard. Amongst the strongest objectors were the squirrel and the tortoise. The tortoise, who had thought the whole thing out, was aware that as everyone knew that his mother was alive, she being rather an amiable old person and friendly with all comers. The same excuse would not avail him a second time. He therefore told his mother to climb up a palm tree and that he would provide her with food until the famine was over. He instructed her to let down a basket every day and said that he would place food in it for her. The tortoise made the basket for his mother and attached it to a long string of tai tai. The string was so strong that she could haul her son up whenever he wished to visit her. All went well for some days, as the tortoise used to go at daylight to the bottom of the tree where his mother lived and placed food in the basket. Then the old lady would pull the basket up and have her food, and the tortoise would depart on his daily round in his usual leisurely manner. In the meantime, the leopard had to have his daily food, and the squirrel's turn came first after the grandmother's had been finished. So he was forced to produce his mother for the leopard to eat, as he was a poor, weak thing and not possessed of any cunning. The squirrel was, however, very fond of his mother, and when she had been eaten, he remembered that the tortoise had not produced his grandmother for the leopard's food. He therefore determined to set a watch on the movements of the tortoise. The very next morning, while he was gathering nuts, he saw the tortoise walking very slowly through the bush and being high up in the trees and able to travel very fast, had no difficulty in keeping the tortoise in sight without being noticed. When the tortoise arrived at the foot of the tree where his mother lived, he placed the food in the basket which his mother had let down already by the tie tie. And having got into the basket and given a pull at the string to signify that everything was right, was hauled up and after a time was let down again in the basket. The squirrel was watching all the time and directly the tortoise had gone, jumped from branch to branch of the trees and very soon arrived at the place where the leopard was snoozing. When he woke up, the squirrel said, You have eaten my grandmother and my mother, but the tortoise has not provided any food for you. It is now his turn, and he has hidden his mother away in a tree. At this, the leopard was very angry and told the squirrel to lead him at once to the tree where the tortoise's mother lived. But the squirrel said, The tortoise only goes at daylight when his mother lets down a basket. So if you go in the morning early, she will pull you up and you can then kill her. To this, the leopard agreed. And the next morning, the squirrel came at cock crow and led the leopard to the tree where the tortoise's mother was hidden. The old lady had already let down the basket for her daily supply of food and the leopard got into it and gave the lion a pull. But except for a few small jerks, nothing happened, as the old mother tortoise was not strong enough to pull a heavy leopard off the ground. When the leopard saw that he was not going to be pulled up, being an expert climber, he scrambled up the tree, and when he got to the top, he found the poor old tortoise, whose shell was so tough that he thought she was not worth eating, so he threw her down onto the ground in a violent temper and then came down himself 
and went home. Shortly after this, the tortoise arrived at the tree and finding the basket on the ground, gave his usual tug at it, but there was no answer. He then looked about and after a little time came upon the broken shell of his poor old mother, who by this time was quite dead. The tortoise knew at once that the leopard had killed his mother and made up his mind that for the future he would live alone and have nothing to do with other animals. Moral. Instead of sabotaging your associate's success, ask them to teach you how you too can become successful. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the story, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy the story, still hit the subscribe button because you may like the next one. Until next time, enjoy life. Finding Africa.